بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو مائی یوٹیوب چینل ڈائیورسٹی آف پلانٹ سون ان دس چینل یو ول گیٹ ایوری انفارمیشن ریلیٹڈ ٹو پلانٹس اینڈ دیئر ڈائیورسٹی تھرو آؤٹ دا ورلڈ بفور اسٹارٹنگ دس ویڈیو آئی ریکویسٹ یو آل ٹو پلیز سبسکرائب مائی یوٹیوب چینل دس چینل نیڈس یور اسپورٹ ان دا فارم آف یور فیڈ بیکس کمنٹس subscription and likes today's topic of my video is about morphology of stem and i have divided this video in three parts today i will discuss its second part i hope that you will enjoy this video so let's start the video Today I will discuss about the modifications of the stems. Modifications of stems. Modifications are changes in form and function to suit varied needs like the storage of food, reproductive growth and survival through unfavorable seasons. vegetative propagation mechanical support protection and photosynthesis etc modifications occur in aerial sub aerial and underground stems stems or branches of certain plants instead of growing vertically upward and bearing leaves and flowers like normal stem are modified into various shapes to carry on the special functions such as perennation second is vegetative propagation and third is the specialized functions such as storage etc so these modifications may be sub aerial underground modifications and aerial modifications modifications of stems so these are the different modifications of stems in this diagram you can see that modification of the stem is divided into three types first is the aerial modification second is sub aerial modification third is the underground modification and aerial modification is further divided into the tendrils phylloclade thorn bulbils and clay dot on the other hand the sub aerial modification is further subdivided into the rana stolon offset and saka the third one which is underground modification is further divided into the rhizome tubers corm and bulb so these are the different modifications of the stem as shown in this figure modifications of stem so these are the different modifications of stem underground modification of the stem includes the rhizome rhizome includes shoots roots and knot on the other hand the underground modification of stem also include the corm which includes knot scale leaf and this is corm the third type of the underground modification of the stem is the adventitious root and adventitious root include the base of scape bulb and the fourth type of the underground modification of stem is the tuber which includes the stem 
as shown in the figure. The second type of the modification of the stem is aerial modification of stem which is further divided into four types. The first type of the aerial modification of stem is the phylloclates which includes the phylloclate, leaf spine, internode, knot and stem. The second type of the aerial modification of the stem is cladodes, which includes the cladot and stem. The third type of the aerial modification of stem is thorns, and thorns include the accessory bud, leaf, thorn, stem, and leaf. On the other hand, the fourth type of the aerial modification of stem is the stem tendrils, which include stem tendril, axillary, leaf and weak stem, as shown in the figure. The third modification of the stem is the sub-aerial modification of stem. And there are four types of sub-aerial modification of stem. First, is the runner. Second is the stolen, which includes the leaflets, stolen and adventitious roots. The third type of the sub aerial modification of stem is the sucker, and sucker includes the aerial shoot, leaves, scale leaf, and suckers, and adventitious roots. The fourth type of the sub-aerial modifications of the stem is offset, which includes the leaves, roots, and offset, as shown in this figure. Modifications of the stem. So, this is the sub-aerial modification of stem, as shown in the figure. Modifications of stem. So, this is the subaerial modification of stem. Subaerial modifications of the stem is further divided into four types. First is the runner. Second is the stolen, which includes the leaflets, stolen, scale leaf, terminal bud, and adventitious roots. The third type of the subaerial modifications of stem is sucker which includes the aerial shoot, leaves, scale leaf, suckers, and adventitious roots. The fourth type of the sub-aerial modifications of stem is offset, which includes leaf, roots, and offset, as shown in the figure. Modifications of the stem. So, these are the underground modifications of stem. Underground stem includes the ginger, which is also known as rhizome. Second type is the colocasia, which is also known as corn. And the third type is the potatoes, which are known as the tubers. And the fourth one is onion which is also known as bulb. Modifications of stems. Underground modifications of the stem are further divided into the four types, which are rhizome, which includes the shoots, stem segments, knot, and roots. Second type is corn, which includes the knot, scale leaf, corn. And the third type is bulb, which includes the base of scape, bulb, and adventitious roots. Fourth type is the tubers, which includes the shoot, stem, and root, as shown in the figure. Modifications of the stem. So these are the aerial modifications of the stem. Modifications of the stems. The aerial modifications of the stems are further divided into four types, 
First is the phylloclades, which includes the phylloclade, leaf spine, internode, node, stem. Second type is the cladodes, which includes the cladode and hooked leaf and stem. Third type is thorns, which includes the accessory bud, leaf, thorn, stem and leaf. And the fourth type is the stem tendrils, which includes the stem tendril axillary, leaf and weak stem, as shown in the figure. Modifications of the stems. Now I will discuss about the aerial stems. And aerial stems are also known as the epitranean stains. They are of three types, which are reduced, erect, and weak. So the first type is reduced stems. The stem is reduced to a small disc. Nods and internodes are not distinguishable. So first, a reduced green discoid stem occurs in the vegetative phase above the base of root in radish, carrot, turnip, etc. Leaves are crowded together on these stems and they are called radical leaves. In some aquatic plants like lemna and spirodella and the next is wolfia. The reduced discoid stem is green and flattened to float on the surface of water. It doesn't bear the leaves. Second, a reduced non-green stem is also found in underground structures which are called bulbs. For example, onion, garlic and lily. Modifications of the stem. So these are the two small aquatic plants with the reduced flattened stems. These are limna and spirodella as shown in the figure. So the second are the erect stems. They are the commonest type of the aerial stems. The stems are sufficiently strong to remain erect are upright without any external support, for example, meals, wheat, and mango. So erect stems with the swollen nerds or jointed stems are called combs. For example, bamboo. Unbranched erect stem is otherwise called the codex or columna, while the branched ones are either excrement or deliquescent. Third one is the weak stems. So the stems are thin, soft and weak and they cannot stand erect and therefore they require a sport. So weak stems can be upright or prostrate. So next I am going to discuss about the upright weak stems. They are of two kinds. The first type is the twiners and the second type is the climbers. So the first one is twiners. The stem is long, flexible and sensitive. It can coil around an upright spot like a rope. For example, the lubulub and ipomia and convolvulus. So depending upon the direction of the coiling, the twiners can be indifferent. And sinistros, anti-clockwise, upper coil disappears at observer's right, for example the convolvulus and dextrose, clockwise, the upper coil disappears at observer's left. For example, in the level up. So modifications of the stems. Twiners. 
In the figure A, you can see that this is the sinistrous twiner of the convolvulus or vences, which is also known in vernacular name as heron curry. In the figure A, it includes the twining stem, sport, leaf, and flower. In the figure B, you can see that this is the dextrose twiner of the lubalub, which is also known in vernacular name is the sem. So, in the figure B, it includes the staple, leaflet, twining stem, and this is the spot, as shown in the figure. So, the second type is the climbers. The stem is weak and flexible but is unable to coil around an upright spot by itself. It requires the help of certain clasping or clinging structures. Accordingly, the climbers are of four types. The first type is the root climbers. The stem clings to the spot by the adventitious roots. For example, the ivy, beetle, tacoma, and the second type is the tendril climbers. The tendrils are green and thread-like sensitive structures which can coil around a spot and help the weak stemmed shoots to climb up. So tendrils may be modified stems. For example, the passiflora, floral birds, for example, the Antigonon and leaf like the Lithyrus Afeca or the leaf part, for example, the Gloriosa P. Clematis and Smilex. The third type is the Scrumbulus. So, Scrumbulus are also known as the Rambulus. The stems are able to rise up a spot by clinging to it with the help of the curved thorns. For example, in the Bougainvillea and floral stalk hooks, for example, the Artabortris and leaflet hooks, for example, the Docantha Anguiscati. Anguiscati and spines, for example, the climbing asparagus or pickles, for example, the climbing rose. And the fourth type is the lianas, which are also known as the lians. So they are woody twiners or climbers, for example, the fenera, which is also known as bohemia. Wally. Both the climber and the twiner are weak stems which rise upwards by a spot for exposing their foliage and reproductive organs. So next time I'm going to discuss about the prostrate or subaerial weak stems. The weak stems take the spot of the ground for spreading and proper exposure of the leaves and reproductive organs so they are of two broad categories first are the trailers and second is the creepers the creepers root at intervals while the trailers do not do so breaking off the different rooted parts help in vegetative reproduction in creepers so creepers are of three kinds the first kind is runners second is the stolons and the third is offsets. The first I will discuss about the trailers which are also known as the strugglers. Strugglers. So the shoots trail or spread horizontally along the ground without rooting at intervals. For example the convolvulus microphyllus and euphorbia prostrata tribulus. Trailers are of two types, which are the procumbent 
branches flat on the ground, for example, the tribulus, convolvulus microphyllus, which is also known as the evolvulus and decumbent, like the sum. Branches partially vertical, for example, the potulaca, three ducts. In diffuse tailor, the branches spread in all directions, for example, the bohevia, diffusa, and euphobia prostrata. In others, the branches spread in one direction only. Modifications of stems. So this is the diffuse trailer of the euphobia prostrata, which includes the ground trailer weak stem as shown in the figure. So the next type is the runners. They are special, narrow, green, above ground, horizontal or prostrate branches which develop at the bases of the erect shoots which are called as the crowns. A number of runners arise from one erect shoot. They spread in different directions and ultimately bear the new corns and tufts of the adventitious roots. The process is repeated. Each runner has generally one or more knots. The knots bear the scale leaves and axillary birds. The latter can also grow to form the new aerial shoots or crowns. For example, in lawn or dope. Grass, like the cyanodon, dactylon, and the next is the centella which is also known as the hydrocotyl. Vernacular name is the brownie, booty, and oxalis. In mint, the horizontal branches may be green and runner-like or underground and sucker-like. So the runners may break due to injury or decay. It gave rise to a number of independent plants, for example, the oxalis lawn cross modifications of the stems runners in the figure a you can see that this is the runner of the grass which includes the green leaf these are scale leaves not rana and fibrous adventitious roots and the second figure is the rana of the Centella asiatica. Vernacular name is the Brahmi booty, which includes the green leaf. This is scale leaf. Next is the knot. And the, in the last, you can see that these are the fibrous adventitious roots as shown in this figure. So the third type is the stolons. They are elongated, horizontal, or arched runners, which can cross over the small obstacles. For example, the jasmine, wild strawberry, and peppermint. For this, the tip of the stolen generally grows above the level of the ground, and each stolen has one or more knots. Possessing the scale leaves and, axil and axillary buds. The term stolen is sometimes used for the underground runner, where the tip, unlike the sucker, doesn't come above the ground. For example, the colocasia. So, modifications of the stem stolen in the figure A, you can see that this is the strawberry, which includes the leaflets stolen scale leaf adventitious roots and terminal bud in the figure b you can see that this is the colocasia which includes the young plant stolen aerial leaves aerial leaves and corn as shown in this figure so the next type is the offsets 
They are one internode long, small ranas, which are found in the roseate plants at the ground or water level. For example, the pistia, which is also known as the water lattice. And the second type is the icornia, which is also known as the water hyacinth. So modifications of the stems includes the offsets. In the figure A, you can see that this is the pistia, which includes the leaves, offset, roots, as shown in the figure. In the figure B, you can see that this is the icornia, which includes the lamina, swollen petiole, offset, spongy stem, and root pocket, as shown in the figure. So next time I'm going to discuss about the underground stems and underground stem modifications. The underground or subterranean stems lie below the surface of the soil. They are non-green, store food and take part in perination. Birds and roots occur over them. They can therefore be used for the vegetative propagation of the plants. Underground stems send up the aerial shoots or leaves at intervals during the favorable seasons. So underground stems can be differentiated from roots by first, the absence of root cap, second, absence of root hair, third, presence of the terminal bud, fourth, presence of nodes and internodes, fourth, fifth, the occurrence of the foliage or scale leaves on the nodes and sixth is the presence of axillary birds on the nodes. Seventh, exogenous branching and eighth, stem-like internal structure. So underground stems are of the following five types and the first type is sucker. It is a special non-green slender stem branch which arises from the underground base of an erect shoot or crown. It grows horizontally in the soil and ultimately comes out to form a new aerial shoot or crown. The process is repeated and each sucker has one or more nodes with the scale leaves and axillary buds. The latter can also sprout to form the new crowns, for example, into the chrysanthemum. Mint has a sucker-like or runner-like lateral branches. So suckers also occur in banana and pineapple. So modifications of the stem, these are the suckers of the chrysanthemum, which includes the main shoot, suckers, adventitious roots, roots of new plants, suckers, and the new shoot, as shown in the figure. Next is the rhizome. It is a perennial, fleshy underground stem, which continues its growth indefinitely in the soil, producing the new leaves or aerial shoots during the favorable season and perennation during the unfavorable season. The stem, as usual, is differentiated into the nodes and internodes and adventitious roots occur on the lower side. So rhizome is of two types. The first type is the root stalk. The rhizome is upright or oblique, with the tip almost reaching the soil surface. For example, the fawn. dry up terries, which is also known as aspidium. It is generally unbranched and exception being banana. And the second type is the struggling. The rhizome is horizontal, so it is generally branched and branching may be. First is the racemus. When the axis is monopodial, for example, water lily, lotus, and sacrum. Second is the uniparous cymos, when the axis is sympodial, for example the ginger, which is also known as the 
zingiber, official. Second is the tamaric, which is known as the curcuma, domestica. And the third is the cana. So modifications of the stem. This is the sucker of the mint, which is also known as podina. So it includes the leaves, aerial shoot, scale leaf, sucker, and adventitious roots, as shown in the figure. Modifications of the stem. So this is the rootstock rhizome of fawn, dry oak cherries, which is also known as aspidium. And it includes the leaf base. And this is the circinately coiled young leaves. This is the rhizome and adventitious roots as shown in the figure. So, modifications of the stem. A monopodial rhizome of the lotus, which is also known as the Nalambo nucifera vernacular name, is the Kamal. It includes the floating leaf, emerged leaf, petiole, rhizome, and adventitious roots, as shown in the figure. Modifications of the stem also include the symporial rhizome of ginger marketed, and it includes the internode, node, symporial axis, base of the aerial shoot, and lateral bud, as shown in the figure. So the third type is the corm. It is a short, thick, swollen, usually unbranched, spherical or subspherical underground stem which grows vertically in the soil and is formed annually. A corm bears a number of circular knots with the scales which represent the thin sheathing leaf bases of fallen dead leaves. So axillary birds are correct places. The base contains a number of adventitious roots. Corn takes part in the perination. In the favorable season, each corn gave rise to one or more aerial shoots from its birds. The aerial shoots manufacture food and store the same at their bases where the new corns are formed. The new corns appear either above, for example, in the Frisia or Gladiolus are the site, for example, the Colocasia of the old corn. The aerial shoots die down during the unfavorable season, and examples are found in the Colocasia and Saffron. Vernacular name is the Kachalu. Next is the Frisia and Crocus. Vernacular name is the Kaser and Amorphophallus, elephant foot, vernacular name is the Zamin Kant. So modifications of the stems also include the comb. In the figure A, you can see that this is the colocasia, which includes the nod and lateral bud. In the figure B, you can see that this is the phrygia, which includes the comb of new ear and corm of last year. In the figure C, you can see that this is the crocus in vernacular name, it is known as Kesa, which includes the new corm, old corm, and roots. In the next figure, you can see that this is the corm of the amophilus, 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 Companulatus, and it includes the aerial shoot, parent comb, daughter combs, and adventitious roots, as shown in this figure. Modifications of the stem. In the figure A, this is the external view of the stem tuber of potato and showing many eyes. And it includes the nod, eye, internod, and stem tuber. In the figure B, this is an enlarged eye and it includes the scale leaf as shown in the figure. So the fourth type is the bulb. It is an underground pyriform 
spherical structure that possesses a reduced convex or slightly conical disc shaped stem and several fleshy scales enclosing a terminal bird. Axillary birds are correct places. The bird possesses a number of adventitious roots arising from the lower side of the stem. So birds are of two types. The first is tunicated and the second is scaly. So first type is the tunicated layered or laminate. The bulb is covered by a sheath of dry membranous scales which are called as the tunic. The fleshy scales are arranged in a more or less concentric fashion. Modifications of the stem, this is the tunicated bulb of onion. In the figure A, you can see this is the external view which includes the bulb and adventitious roots. In the figure B, this is the vertical section of the bulb and it includes the tunic, fleshy scales, terminal bud, disc, axillary bulb and adventitious roots. In the figure C, this is the transfer section of the bulb and it includes the tunic, fleshy scales and these are the adventitious roots as shown in the figure. So, tunicated bulbs are further divided into the two types and there are further two kinds. So, the first kind is the simple tunicated bulb. In the onion, the fleshy scales represent the leaf bases in the outer part and scale leaves in the central region. They occur in concentric fashion. The bulb is covered by a whitish or pinkish tunic. The other examples are the tulip and Narcissus. Second type is the compound tunicated bulb. It occurs in garlic. The fleshy scales represent the buds and the buds are sickle shaped and are called the bulblets or claws. The bulblets occur in two or more somewhat irregular concentric rings around the central floral axis. Each ring is surrounded by a white membranous sheath or tunic. So, however, the bulblets of a ring are imbricately arranged. A bulblet has its own thick white tunic, a fleshy zone and a growing point. So modifications of the stem also includes the compound tunicated bulb of the garlic, which is also known as the lacin. In the figure A, you can see that this is the external view and which includes the tunic and inflorescence axis impression of the bulblet and this is the squid stem and adventitious roots in the figure b you can see that this is vertical section of the bulb and which includes the tunics inflorescence axis bulblet discoid stem and adventitious roots in the figure c you can see that this is the transfer section of the bulb and it includes the tunics and inflorescence axis and bulblets. In the figure D, you can see that this is the external view of the bulblet. And in the figure E, you can see that this is the vertical section of the bulblet. And it includes the fleshy part, embryonic leaves, and tunic of bulblet and growing point, as shown in the figure. So the next type is the scaly and imbricate or naked. A tunic or covering sheath is absent. The fleshy scales are narrow and overlap one another on the margins only. For example, lily. Modifications of the stem. So this is the scaly bulb of lily which includes the fleshy scales and these are adventitious roots as shown in the figure. If you like my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the bell icon as well for further information. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for your time and appreciation.